Hello and welcome to my new YouTube channel Stephen Hartley. I will give you now a brief introduction for those who haven't met me before and for those who have met me before welcome to the new channel I'll be uploading things when I feel I need to talk about them. So brief sort of history of me why do I make YouTube videos? Well I started out in 2012 because I thought, you know, the world needs sorting out and here was an opportunity for me to get across what I thought and I made a video about it. Did that channel for quite a few years, got into some things here and there, got into something really good in 2014, which is when I would say I became an existentialist. And I've only actually learned that word recently, but somebody who thinks about existence. And then through various reasons I changed and I went to another channel. And I did that for a couple of years and now I've got a new channel. And the reason I keep moving is because um, the channel gets strikes and things like that. But there's a lot of content on there that I don't want sort of lost forever if I continue and accidentally break laws and then they ban it. Now, I I would say, you know, what? so I'm an existentialist. I uh, spent four years meditating seriously, looking for answers, found answers. And, all right, so I believe at the moment that my belief system is the best in the world. That we know of. Okay, so big claim, and you know, <laughs> who who would believe it? You know, I'm sure there'd be plenty to argue, and you could never prove it anyway, apart from time. Because what I came to the conclusion is that you know we will all work out the truth in the end. So whatever path we're on, whichever direction we're coming from, we're all heading towards sort of more truth. You take on truths bit by bit that you can handle you know, when you're interested. I was always interested in existence, well, I say always, but when I was 19, I wrote a song called We Are, or it was a bit earlier, I can't remember, We Are, you know, because I thought about it, existence, you know, why do we exist? It's not logical that anything should exist. If you're going to use just logic, there shouldn't be anything here at all, but there is, and, you know, we are there, you know, we are, so get over it, <laughs> you know, you must be wrong because we do exist. So, you know, that's, that used to scare the hell out of me, just, do you know what I mean, just almost, I at some points thought I could believe myself out of existence. But what I've discovered is that we aren't just physical beings and how I've discovered this well the basic obvious thing is that when we sleep and I've had some dreams and I'm sure most people have had some really real dreams where you're in the dream it's not on this planet or whatever it's somewhere else but it seems just as real when you're there so that is basically another dimension so if we've got this physical dimension here that's one and then we've got a spiritual dimension when we go to sleep, that's another. And there is another dimension dominant to both of those. And that is where all the feelings are. Now by the time I had got into my 20s, I basically probably detached from my feelings. And I thought the best way to operate was without feelings because I didn't understand them. And sometimes I didn't like them particularly when I was 19, I had this very, a lot happened when I was 19, I had this very sort of spiritual encounter that scared the crap out of me, made me think I should probably be booked into a mental asylum, and I kind of turned away from it. Um, but um, as my life went on, you know, I got married, had a kid, and then broke up, and suddenly found myself with a heck of a lot of time on my hands, and I was starting to become a bit depressed with this um, idea and until I worked out what it was I was supposed to be doing which was meditating, right? 
I, like everybody else, was point in meditating, I'm sure there's something more productive you can do. But no, it was actually the best thing I could do. And I got into some positions in meditation where I'd never felt so alive, you know, so more connected with with what, you know, me, basically, my soul. Which, I believe, the endocrine system, the hormonal organs of which they go from your testes to your pineal gland and all in between they are geared up so that we can feel this other dimension making us machines capable of feeling all the dimensions we are the multi-dimensional entities right so there we go that was it you know in a nutshell and uh, you know what are we specifically so that's the that's the the, the machine that we are have we existed forever? No, is my belief. I believe that we came into existence maybe up to about four billion years ago. and We were created by our mother and father, who's just like what we are, just a lot more further along, has, has, has had much more experience. And in those first couple of billion years, whatever, you know, we probably were barely anything at all, you know, just like began as like just a boom, speck of whatever and um, you know it, but it would be there would be an existence of us in the physical in the spiritual and in the emotional so we'd have that thing from the start anyway four billion years later we've got to the point where our mother and father is guiding us and we're capable of of um, living a life in a being like this which is capable of more than we were a million years ago in more basic beings. So we've gradually been having all these lives which granted to us by our mother and father as experiences, but that our true selves are somewhere else. And we're sort of projected into a body that's capable of having these experiences, but our true selves are basically <laughs> in another universe, uh, which, you know, this could all sound a bit complicated, and obviously I'm just trying to give it in a very brief thing. But anyway, the, the reason I believe these truths is because I've been able to sit with them and be comfortable. And there are lots of belief systems that I've tried out, and I haven't been able to sit with them and be comfortable. It's like the heart knows. So once the heart knows, you know, and feels all right with it, you can trust that. That's what you can trust. And so, I talk about these things on video, so if you're interested in what I've just said, you know, I've explained it in, in different videos. But obviously, as I go on and things get newer, I, I sort of, I, have, I, I do sometimes change my mind, but quite often I'm just refining it slightly. And, 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 and that's what I'm doing now, basically, is, you know, looking more into the details of things and seeing how they how they're true. Like previous live stuff with moles, right? I'm really seeing that now. Every time I watch a film and it's a new actor and God, look at that mole there, he got shot in the forehead. That would have been in a probably an assassin's one, you know, or if it's the side of the head, maybe it was a suicide, who knows. Um, stuff like uh, wrinkles on the forehead to uh, denote sort of your, is it an intelligence capability? But it seems to me I've been noticing that people with less lines going across on their forehead, they have a more basic out view of life and happier, perhaps, uh, than people with more and more complicated. The most I've seen of full lines going across is four. So I haven't seen anyone with five. Anyway, little details like that. Um, you know, whatever comes up, basically. Uh, Currently, I might even make a quick short video after this having another look at Psalms 122. As, you know, do Psalms predict the future? Does Nostradamus predict the future? Uh, for me at the moment, too complicated to uh, tackle. I'm waiting for some um, inspiration in whether I should even tackle it because it's quite possible that it's a load of crap. Um... 
the revelations I've looked into that you know the Bible it's full of good stuff but I wouldn't take it literally word for word although at some point I'm sure we will decipher what everything in there means and why it was written how it's written there's the whole Atlantis stuff we've had previous civilizations on this planet that was us before as well but obviously not all of us because currently there's seven billion um, people on the planet so that is something that is confusing, you know, how many children does God have and how many are there on this particular planet as opposed to other planets in the galaxy, whatever. So, yeah, I guess that was um, probably enough of an introduction and, uh, do you know, subscribe, whatever, talk, chat. That's what I like. I like to um, <laughs> set people right. No, of course I don't. You know, I believe that, you know, we can always learn something from everyone. So I'm always open to learning too. All right. Ciao for now.